Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to test multiple mediators uh, in AMOS, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. So if we kind of just look at this uh, kind of simple mediation model here, um, we've got this construct called uh, adaptive behavior which was from a restaurant setting which did the server adapt their behavior to the customer. Uh, and we want to see if this type of behavior uh, leads to uh, delight or this kind of elevated uh, kind of uh, emotional output or does it just really lead to more what we would call kind of satisfaction. Uh, so satisfaction typically is, is did it meet expectations. And then did uh, that influence positive word of mouth. So if we want to see the indirect effect and see if adaptive behavior flows through satisfaction to word of mouth or does it flow through customer delight to word of mouth well right now we, we need to try to test the indirect effects the problem with Amos when we use kind of their drop down kind of menus is um, Amos will give you really the total indirect effect so if I look at the indirect effect from adaptive behavior to word of mouth through the drop-down menus of Amos, the indirect effect is really the indirect effect through delight and satisfaction. So it gives you kind of the total indirect effect. And that doesn't really help us. Because if I was just really concerned about, I really just want to know well, what is the indirect effect through delight and what is the individual effect through satisfaction and is it significant or is it not? Then you have to really kind of go about a different way of uh, of setting to this up to test mediation. Now just as kind of a recap, uh, typically what you will see um, in the labeling of, of a mediation or indirect effect is the IV uh, to the mediator is oftentimes referred to as the A path, uh, A as an apple, and the mediator to the dependent variable is oftentimes uh, labeled as the B path, B as in boy. And then uh, usually if you're going to test mediation, you're going to include a direct effect there too. And that is referred to as the C path. So if we are concerned with understanding uh, just the indirect effect, uh, maybe that's going through customer delight, then we would need to label each one of these paths so that Amos will know, no, I don't want you to give me the total indirect effect. I want you to give me the indirect effect on the paths that I tell you I'm concerned with. And, and so the way to do that really is by initially kind of labeling the, um, the parameters here. So if I double click into this and I just want to call this independent to the mediator, the A path, uh, it would be A underscore path. Uh, I can actually call it anything I want, but for for clarity's sake, you know, I'm going to kind of use that same nomen nomenclature in the labeling. So I may have A path um, and then B path, and then I'll label this one uh, C path. So just for the uh, sake of time, I've kind of fast forwarded here and labeled all our paths for us. So you can see I've labeled adaptive behavior. To delight the A path, we've got the B path here, and then we've got the C path. But I've also got a second mediator then, and well, how do I label that one? Well, I can test these individually, uh, and then go back and maybe wipe out those labels, and then maybe put this one up here as the A path, and then I could also do this with the B and leave the C path as, as is. But I, oftentimes I don't really like to do that. I like to see kind of the total effects. Um, through all my mediation tests at the same time instead of just kind of piecemealing it. And the way that you can do that is just by labeling all of those paths. So I called the first ones here the A path, B, and the C. But this second mediator, I'm just going to call this the X path. And then the, we'll call this uh, from the mediator to the dependent variable, the Y path. You can Again, you can label these anything you want. But I'm just doing something that's going to try to keep it simple for us to understand the mediation test. So after I've labeled everything, now the next thing I need to do is I need to go into the estimands function. The estimands function, uh, what it does is it lets you kind of denote, uh, somewhat through coding, if you will, uh, in Amos, um, 
the really the analysis that you want specifically. And the estimands function is located at the very bottom down here. Uh, and if there's no estimands there, it'll say no user defined estimands. Uh, but if you just double click into this, you can define a new estimate and start a, uh, start there, or you can even edit an existing one. So I've already got uh, our, some of our estimates kind of set up here, and I'll just kind of walk you through this. So the, the first thing is, is you need to kind of to, um, to label what the test is going to be. So for this first indirect a path going from adaptive behavior through customer delight to word of mouth. I'm just going to call that indirect test. Uh, and to test the indirect effect, again, I'm just going to uh, take the A path and I'm going to multiply that times the B path. So you can see here indirect test and then equals A path times B path. But I also want to test the indirect effect that's going through satisfaction. So with that one, I'm going to label it uniquely for the test. So this one I'm just going to call sat for satisfaction underscore indirect test and put an equals. So that is the X path times the Y path. And so the other thing that I want to do is I want to hit my uh, check syntax, make sure that my syntax is okay. I don't have any errors, which I don't. And then normally you're going to need to save this uh, estimate before you can move forward to. Uh, and then after you saved it, you can X out of this uh, and you're ready to start running your analysis. So in the analysis options here, we want to make sure we go to, to bootstrap because for any kind of mediation test, uh, and I've got some previous videos on just simple mediation that go into more detail on this, but we want to do, test a bootstrap, which is kind of this resampling method to create kind of a pseudo population. And it's going to give us confidence intervals and we want to see if that indirect effect falls within uh, the confidence interval. So we want to perform a bootstrap and we want to to get uh, uh, 5,000 samples, uh, that's sufficiently large. And then we're going to check bias corrected confidence intervals and it defaults to 90, but we're going to change that to 95 because we're looking at 05 significance. And so at this point, we've got everything we need to test our indirect effect going through different, uh, through different ways. So let's go ahead and run our analysis. Um, that's going to take just a second because we've got to run through all of the bootstraps, all 5,000 of them. And it looks like we've finished. So now we can go into the, uh, the output. So in the, the text output, uh, initially if we just go to the estimates, you can see over here I've got labeled all of those uh, parameters that I labeled right here are, are present. So you can see adaptive behavior to delight was significant uh, and delight uh, excuse me, adaptive behavior dissatisfaction was also significant. We also see the B path, the uh, customer delight word of mouth was significant, um, but the Y path, the satisfaction to word of mouth, was not. All right? And then looking at our direct path, the C path, it was non-significant as well. So initially, um, just looking at just the direct, you know, uh, parameter estimates to our mediator, not necessarily even looking at the indirect effects yet, but just the direct effects. We know our C path is non-significant, which means um, there's a possibility of full mediation if the indirect effects uh, come out. And we also see that satisfaction probably initially is going to have some issues in the indirect effect because at least one uh, half of the indirect effect is uh, coming out non-significant. So now let's go into um, the output uh, and assess those estimates that we denoted. It was like we want specifically to test this particular relationship. So if we go into the estimates and we click the uh, kind of the drop down and we go into scalars uh, functions, you can see at the very bottom of that there is a, a function there called user defined estimates and we want to click on that. So initially what it's going to give us is those two tests that we outlined and it's going to give us the indirect effects. So we know the indirect effect through um, customer delight was that 0.365 and we can see that the indirect effect through satisfaction was 0.01. But again, this doesn't tell us significance. To do this, we need to uh, go down here where it says bootstrap confidence uh, and click those. And so now not only do we have the indirect effects, we have the confidence intervals and significance. 
So for the indirect effect that went from uh, adaptive behavior to delight to word of mouth, we can see that the lower bound was 0.22, the upper bound was 0.54, so that confidence interval did not cross zero. And our significance is less than 0 0.001. The indirect effect that went from adaptive behavior to satisfaction to positive word of mouth was 0 0.01. And you can see here our lower bound was a negative 0 0.07, but our upper bound was a 0 0.10, so it crosses zero here. And you can see that our significance is, uh, it is non-significant with a 0 0.77. So in retrospect now from our our multiple mediators, we know that the effect of adaptive behavior really only has an indirect effect to positive word of mouth through customer delight. So really when they have this, you know, super elevated kind of emotional reaction, do you see this adaptive behavior kind of influence positive word of mouth? If they adapt the behavior and it only leads to satisfaction, you know, we saw that kind of indirect effect kind of falls out a little bit. Um, and so this is just kind of a way to kind of assess multiple mediators. If I only had one mediator here, satisfaction wasn't there, well then I could probably use the uh, the functions in Amos and the output, the indirect effects, uh, and it would give me uh, all that information without having to label it or going down to the estimands function too, a little bit quicker. But if I have multiple mediators, what I really need to do is I've got to label my paths just so I can, you know, Amos can know which you know, route, if you will, I'm trying to focus in on, on the analysis. And then after that, you're going to need to go into the estimates and tell them, all right, this is what I really want you to analyze specifically within this bigger construct. Sometimes I've seen uh, researchers in the past and even students, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll come in here and they'll just like, well, I'm just going to delete this, um, uh, X path, if you will, right here that we've labeled, and I'm just going to test customer delight that way because now it's 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 the only indirect effect going to to word of mouth from adaptive behavior, and you don't want to do that um, because in essence you want to test your model in its full conceptualization. You just want Amos to focus on the specific parts of the full conceptualization. You don't want to change its effect because by kind of removing paths, what you're doing is you're changing the the ultimate impact possibly to even word of mouth through there uh, by doing that. So your best option is label those paths, go down to the estimates, label it specifically what you want to test to isolate exactly the indirect effect. Um, so if you're looking for more information about mediation, um, mediation through uh, serial mediation, or moderated mediation or mediation that uses categorical variables, I'd encourage you to check out my book, uh, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, and if you saw value in the video, I'd ask you to uh, like and subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day. Good people.